Hey guys, today we'll be covering enthusiast NVMe SSDs, and more specifically one from Kyoxia. To the general consumer, this may sound like a non-name brand, but you could not be far away from the truth. Kyoxia is formerly known as Toshiba Memory, who is actually the inventor of the modern day flash memory and is a rather large player in the league, with estimated global market share of almost 19%. With that being said, let's check out their latest drive, the Xeria Plus G2. And if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. The drive we have here is a one terabyte variant. It also comes in the larger capacity of two terabytes and a smaller 500 gigabytes. Do note that the smaller drive will have a slightly slower speed. While it is based on the older PCIe Gen 3 interface, I believe for most people that would be good enough. We will compare this Kyoxia drive to another PCIe Gen 3 drive from Sabrent as well as PCIe Gen 4 drive from Samsung. Both of these drives are actually 2TB in size. More on that a bit later on. On paper, when placing the specs side by side, Samsung drive has a clear lead and spoiler alert, it is really damn fast. But does it actually matter? We're going to cover a few benchmark results and then do real life examples to check this from different angles. First, let's analyze the difference between the drives. When we put Sabrent and Kyoxia in the head-to-head -head battle, there is no difference in sequential reads, but there is a nice bump in sequential write speed. However, Kyoxia drive has a considerably higher performance results in random read and random write speeds. As expected, Samsung drive shows much higher results in all the above. Then we have warranty. All of these drives boast five-year warranty, so it is safe to say they're pretty even here. Looking at TBW, also known as terabytes written endurance, we see Sabrent taking a clear lead with Samsung and Kyoxia rather far behind. To be fair, if you're planning to use any of these drives as your primary boot drive, then even 400 terabytes is plenty. However, if you use it in a production environment, then this may not be enough. Examples of this could be cache drive for video editing or more extreme case, storage server drive. With well, all of this said, the details on paper always show the best case scenario, so let's check out some benchmarks and see how they really stack up. First test is ATO disk benchmark, and the results are validating the speeds that Kyoxia advertises. These are within few hundred megabytes of the advertised speeds. Interestingly enough, both Sabrent and Samsung deliver slightly lower speeds as to compare to the advertised. Sabrent comes about 600 megabytes short on the read, but surpasses the write speed. On the other hand, Samsung is about 700 megabytes short on the read speed. Next, we delve deeper into Crystal Disk Mark benchmark, where we are running real profile with a test size of one gigabyte, and we'll find Kyoxia drive is a little faster as compared to the Sabrent drive, but when we look at the Samsung drive, we'll find that both PCIe Gen 3 drives are blown out of the water. After changing the test to 8GB size, we find basically the same results on Sabrent and Samsung drives, but sequential write speeds on Kyoxia drive plummets down. There is a good reason for this. Modern TLC SSDs run in a dynamic mode where a portion of a drive is allocated for caching. This portion of a drive works at a much higher speed, and for normal day-to-day -day tasks can significantly improve performance, especially for small files or applications. And while you're not using the data, the drive then in the background offloads it to the slower part, making it ready to receive more. In this scenario, we pushed a larger load, which saturated the cache and forced the drive to run at a slower speed. You might be asking, why did the other drives not have this problem in this test? The answer here is actually pretty simple. Our test bench here simulates a pretty standard system. It has a few applications, a few games, and other files. The total size is just over 450 gigabytes. As the other drives are twice the size, they have more space for the dynamic cache. That's why most SSDs slow down considerably when they get full. The real question should be, does this slowdown in benchmarks also translate to real life examples? For this, we ran a few quick tests to see the real world situation. We set up our test bench and cloned the operating system to ensure everything is exactly the same. The first test was booting into Windows, and here Samsung Drive came in at 15 seconds and both Kyoxia and Sabrent took 18 seconds. Next test is opening up the game. In this example, we used Shadow of a Tomb Raider and found Samsung Drive is about one second ahead. That's not really much of a difference between the other two drives. While in the game, we also started the benchmark, which loads up all the data for the level and found that the three drives were within the margin of error of each other. As you can see, just because benchmarks show particular performance, it does not always translate exactly to the real world situations. 
In some cases, an average user may not even notice the difference between one of the fastest NVMe drives on the market and something that is just fast enough. There will always be specific workloads where speed will make a difference. But this particular drive is aimed at general public, and here you will do just fine. Important thing to note, size does matter. Do try to get drive larger than you need today, so you can both maximize dynamic cache and also ensure you have enough space for the files you intend to hold now and in the future. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up and subscribe for more. And we'll see you guys in the next one.